Trumpi. Hey, my man. Umland. Nice to see you. Ah, great. Yeah. Hundred. If if you are my water, so you're part of my group. <laughs> yeah. I'm the famous one in your group. <laughs> Welcome to Lutandos Beko TV. Lathlela with Katleho Evidence. Mauta Mashiho. Um, for Mama Melody Sundowns, Orlando Parrots, Hellenic, Silver Stars, Striker. Thank you very much for joining us. Please, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel and press that notification button so that you don't miss any of our exclusive content my brother um, trumpi umland i'm hundreds you are playing very nice music <laughs> and um uh, are you romantic uh not per se but I, I like nice music okay that's the kind of music i listen to when i no people like you are coming over <laughs> <laughs> if it was any of my friends i would be yeah. Rocking hip hop or house or something like that. Yeah, tell me, like, how how is it like, you know, growing up, uh, Bushpark Ridge, um, mm. no facilities, you know, um, bit, you know, um, no football pitches, mm. uh, proper, you know, how how is, how Ooh. was your childhood like? Rural in a way. Yeah, yeah. Chances are not the same as this one's here. <laughs> but it, 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 it's not necessarily a challenge, but it's where we are. We have to embrace where we come from. We have to grow up in that environment. If we had to choose, we would probably choose different. But there's nothing that's stopping us from achieving whatever we want to achieve, whether academically, sports-wise, or anything. We can do anything as, as, as long as we, we want to, as long as we, we are willing to to do the work and put in the the hard yards. So growing up in Bushbag Ridge, is, is a, it's not a, deter, a deterrent in a way because there's people who grew up all over the country and they still made it in life. It was it was nice growing up there. But I didn't stay in Bushbag Ridge for, for that much, you know. I, I was born there and then I think I left Bushbag Ridge in 85, so that would have been when I was three. So I grew up in... A, Another rural town called Pegasford. There's a okay. township there called Practicere. That's where I grew up. I mean, that's where everything happened for me. I was there, I think, from grade R until matric. And then, yeah, that's where I grew up. But Bushbag Ridge is always home. And my parents decided to move back to Bushbag Ridge. So now when I say I'm going home, I'm going to Bushbag Ridge. OK. What, yeah. what kind of fond memories do you have uh, growing up, both Bakersford and Bushpark I mean, when you think back. Yeah, it, 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 there's a lot. But the, 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 the most important ones are, are always with, with my family. I'm, I'm lucky enough I had both parents growing up. We stayed in a, in a family of six. I mean, both my parents and my four brothers. So every month end, it was, uh, 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 we always knew we had a trip to go to town. Would probably drive to Pulukwani, to Palaburu, and elsewhere to go buy groceries. So those were, were the days that you look forward to as a kid. You know, get in the car, drive to town. They buy you something nice. You know, they buy you clothes. You, you get to eat KFC <laughs> on the day. <laughs> you you get to eat whatever you want on the day. That yeah. weekend is just proper, and you come back home late. You're tired. Then on a Sunday, you 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 wake up and you go to church. So those were the fondest memories of my childhood, I think, spending that with my family. I'm told you are a bit of a mama's baby. No, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> There's four boys at home and, and we, I think we, we, we are a little bit different. Me and my, my older brother, we're two years apart. Okay. And then my, uh, the brother that comes after me, and the youngest one are also two years apart. So I had a, from 82 until 89, how many years is that? About seven. Yes, yes. I yes. had seven years of being a mama's baby. Okay, okay. And then after so that. So that explains, the, it, you know, why you this close to your mom. 
Yeah, I'm, 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 well, I'm close to both my parents. I talk to them the same. And, yeah. But you know, with the mother, it's, it's a bit different. She's more understanding. More. <laughs> she, she, she's the one who will influence you to do the nice things. Yeah. Whereas the dads are hard and, you know. Yeah. Mm. And, and w when growing up, when then do you realize that you have talent? Yeah, f football wise, that is, ne? Yes. I, I, I think it, I, I never really uh, uh, realized that I, I could play until I was about 17. Because I was just playing in a township and everybody was just saying, yeah, there's these boys. You know, there was a group of us, there was, these boys, they're talented, they can play and whatnot. But no one really uh, uh, took that upon themselves to help or to encourage us to pursue that. So when I was, six, I think I was 16. Yeah, when I was 16, there was this mass trials, you know, this okay. trials, so your provincial trials, you, you trial and then you, they pick you for the province team and then you go represent your province at some national tournament. Yes. So we, we, we as a group, as a club of youngsters, we, we tried to pursue that. And I was selected to play for, for the provincial team when I was 16 and we went to a tournament in Bloemfontein. And we played, and that time I was playing for Great North, that was uh, Bulukwani at the time, Limpopo. And I got selected uh, for the national team. Are you playing and as a striker then? Yeah, I'm playing as a striker. And I was, I, I was scoring left and right. I think <laughs> I, okay. In that tournament I scored. So I got selected for the national team. I was the only player from Limpopo selected for the national under 17 team. Oh, wow. But I mean, from where I was and where I came from, that was just, it, the dream just fizzled out, you know. I never got to come back to camp. I never got a chance to come back and show what I can do at a national team. So everything just went at astray. home. Yeah, you obviously both parents. Are you? Are yeah. they? Now you've been selected for 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 the national for you yes. know to 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 the. Um, uh, following the tournament, yeah, are you getting the encouragement to to pursue football, or they say to you, "Katlejo is called." I I I I I don't want to sound like uh, I'm going to brag, but my parents never really encouraged me to finish school or to go to school or pursue school other than football, okay. because I was doing well at school. Okay. There was uh, 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 nothing that they could say to me to say, Katlejo, uh, no, you, you need to focus on school. Because I was doing well. I was a, I was a top hey, five student okay, at school. Okay, so okay. they didn't worry about that. But my dad knew that I liked football. And he would take me to games whenever I wanted to play. He would buy me soccer boots. He would encourage me. He would, he would support me. But school-wise, no one said, no, school first. Because they knew I would do well. They knew I would pass well. They knew. Yeah. I didn't have to be pushed to study or anything because they knew I, I, I would do well. But the challenge came when, when I, I, I passed my metric. And then vet. And then <laughs> I, I, I went to vet tech and then yeah. I got there. But I didn't want to go to vet tech. I wanted to be a chartered accountant. So yeah. I went to tax and tax said, no, I, I would need to uh, upgrade some of my... my, my or do my, a bridging yeah, course. Yeah, do a bridging stuff, course yeah. because they... they, they, they a, a, a class for, for accounting was full, so I needed a year just to do something, you know? Then I decided to go to Vets Tech. And sure. And I studied at Vets Tech, and when I got there, I was studying banking, and banking was so easy because it was... Oh, it turned the money. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but banking was so easy, and it, <laughs> I just got bored. Yeah. And I thought to myself, no, so let me try football. What's up, that's tech? Are, yeah. you, are, are, are you playing there? How do you then start, get your, your, your big break in yeah. Cape Town? What, what? Yeah, I, I, I was there studying and I, I was playing, but you know, you just playing. You, we stay at a flat, you know, flats of teams that. Oh, they, uh, Melville? No, I stayed in uh, Dorenfontein. At Ponte, yes, that big Coca-Cola <laughs> building. Voda, we changed to Vodacom after. Okay, go to yeah. Florida. I think we stayed at we stayed at the last floor. I think we stayed at it was fifty-three, yeah, fifty-two or something. 
But we stayed at the last floor. Sure. Because we stayed at that penthouse one. There was about six of us because there's three bedrooms there. So I shared with my brother and then there were other two people in the other room, the other two uh, people in the other room. So At that time, at, at least there's no load shedding. No, that we didn't even know the load shedding or anything. We, but ju we just had a problem with the lifts, you know, because from first floor to 50 something floors, <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's... But you're a sportsman. You, you yeah, I was. I was, cool. I, was yeah. I was playing there. Yeah. And there was teams in Hillbro that I played for, just, you know, just go play, just to gamble and whatnot. And well, yeah. yeah. And, and then who, who are some of the, the guys that you, you remember you played with at, at, at Vets Tech? At Vets Tech? Who, who turned professional? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. Because I never played for the school, but I went to trials uh, uh, for, for the university, team, for the technical team. And I think Kwane Lokopo was the coach there. I don't think he would remember me, but I would, obviously I would remember him. Ish. He was the coach there and I didn't get selected. And then after that, I, got I was like, it. yeah, I was like, ah, but it's okay, man. It's fine. Let me try something else. You know? What was something else? Cape Town? No, Cape Town came, Cape Town came in a funny way. You know that? Cape Town came when, because after about a year at, at Vets, I decided, no, man, I don't really need this diploma thing in banking. I can't go work as a tailor, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I went home that December, and then I told my parents that, no, I, I want to play football. I want to pursue a career. And then my dad was like, okay, it's fine. You can do that, but you can't go back to Joburg and go s just sit there and say you're looking for a team. So do that while you are here at home. And I was like, okay, it's fine. Let me stay at home. So I stayed at home for like, uh, I think, three months or two months or something. But I was playing at home. And then when I was playing, there was a guy who came. He had a Volocom League team. And then he said, no, I must come play. I said, no, if I play here, I'm going to play. I'm, I'm, it's going to be like I'm here for the whole season. So yeah. I don't want to register or anything. Okay. So he said, no, it's fine. We'll play you as someone else. I played and I was scoring and was like, no, don't go. And I was like, no, I'm going to go. And then on radio, there was a guy called uh, Dick Putty. Okay. He stayed in Soshanguve. So he was saying, no, he organizes trials for players. He's got an agent that he's working with. Okay. And that agent, funny enough, was Tim Sugazi. Oh, yeah. that early? Yeah, that early. That early in your career, wow. So... Uh, I decided to call the guy and I said to him, hey, my man, I hear you organize trials and whatnot. He was like, yeah, I organize trials. And uh, I think it was, I called him on a, on a Monday or on a Tuesday. I called him on a Tuesday and he said, yeah, uh, you can come uh, 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 to Soshanguve if you can uh, the Wednesday because on Thursday there's players that are going to, no, on Thursday they're having a friendly and the Friday, there's players that are going to Cape Town. So we'll see how, how that turns up. So just come. And then I packed my bags, told my mom, and I didn't tell my dad, I told my mom. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to social group. She was like, okay, here's me. a little bit of money. She gave me money, and then I went to social group. I go to social group, I called this other friend of mine that I went to high school with. We stayed in his room. I mean, he had a single bed at the rest, you know. So yeah. sl I slept there, and then in the morning I woke up, and then I was waiting for that 3 p.m. friendly on the on the Wednesday, on a Thursday. I'm sorry, on a Thursday. I went there, and when I got there, I found these guys, you know. But they were playing in the dust, in the yeah. in the dust, you know, yeah. local pitches sure, and all sure, that. Sure. So I got there, and then this guy called Diggy asked me. Oh, so you, you are Katleo? I'm like, yeah. And he asked me, how good are you? And I was like, no, I'll tell you only uh, after I watch your team play. And he was like, okay. And then they played. Obviously, I was on the bench. I was yeah, new. No one yeah, knew me yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. So they were playing there. And then I'm looking. And they're losing. I think they were losing about three, three nil or something. Yeah. And then I'm looking. And then that guy says to me, hey, that guy who's playing on the right wing and the striker, are going to Cape Town. His team is losing that time. They are going to Cape Town and they are going to uh, attend trials at uh, various Cape Town teams. 
And then he was like, hey, they're good, man. And I was like, no, man. <laughs> Back of that. Yeah, you, you're joking. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm like, you're joking. And you're going to lose it. This guy was like, no. But I've never seen you play. I was like, yeah, it's fine. You've never seen me play, but put me in. Yeah. He put me in, I think, and I think I scored about four or five goals. Confidence have always been there. Yeah, I've, all, I've, I've always... I've always known. Not respect, but I've, I've never looked down on myself. I knew what I was capable of. And yeah. after the game, the guy said to me, no, if you have money, you can join these guys and go to Cape Town. I'll tell Tim Sugazi that you are coming. He called Tim Sugazi, he told him, hey, there's a player coming. Friday, we got on a train. 26 hours to 26 Cape Town. 26 hours to Cape Town. Gosh, I know that train, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been on the train. We got that on the train, went to Cape Town, we got to Cape Town, we met Tim. Tim took us to his place and then he was like, okay, yeah. No, he didn't take us to his place. We went to Avondale Atletico's uh, okay. residence where the players stayed and whatnot. We stayed there and then we were training and training. And then I think after two days, we played a friendly uh, for Avondale. And they said, no, they, they, they won't sign us and whatnot. Tim Sugaz was like, okay, it's fine. There was three of us. He said, okay. no, it's fine. They won't sign you. The other two can go home, but you, you're staying. Wow. Yeah. Then that's when that's your where, journey yes. yeah, starts. That's do you remember your, your, your signing your first contract? Yeah, I do. Okay. We, uh, I signed my, f well, professional, con well, the other one wasn't professional because after, after that, me and Tim went to uh, Avondale, and uh, not Avondale, Jamestown, in okay. the Vodacom League in Cape Town. We played there. So he played with me. He was just saying, no, he wants to help me adjust and whatnot. Okay. So I was playing, but I was doing well. And then we played a friendly against Helene. And I, I told Tim that, you know what, this game, man, can, I think this one can, launch me he was like huh? i was like, ah, this one i want to be serious i want i think this is my chance he was like okay go for it we played hellenic after the friendly hellenic signed me yeah and they were in the psl and that's when i signed my first contract and i signed i think on a thursday on the saturday i was in the starting lineup who are you playing with we're playing rear stars in Pulukwan at that time uh tapelo uh no, I, Which is this? Yeah, I think Tapelo and, and Lehuati were there, and Abedi, Abed Nico and Echoge, I remember them. Yeah. Because they were also represented by a team at the time. They were team's players at the time. I think they were... Yeah, I, I, I just don't remember who, who it was. But we played them in a PSL match in, in TEF. That was my first PSL game. You, you, you don't stay um, long there and then your football journey takes you to, to, to Silver Stars. Yeah, I didn't stay long because I, I think I signed and the season was like, I think it had about 10 or 8 games to go. Yeah. And Bruce Robla was the coach. So Bruce was fired and then they brought in a new coach and the new coach was like, no, he wants players that already uh, have... A, a contract because I signed until the end of the season so I had to sign a new contract to stay so the coach said no he's not gonna sign us and whatnot and so I was like okay it's fine and then I came back uh, here to 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 Gauteng and then I stayed in uh, in Westbury somewhere so team was like no I'll organize you trials at Silver Stars and what but it was those mass trials yes yes was, 500 people were there and that's how the journey began how do you how, how do you get to to, to silver stars oh uh, i think team organized with owen that the, the, the there's a young boy that he needs to have a look at and um, he's, he's he's okay he's good if you like him you can sign him and whatnot and and then I went there, I trained and then I got signed and that's when surprise was leaving for sundowns that season okay. And then there was all this hullabaloo about me replacing surprise and whatnot. So yeah. I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm <laughs> totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm totally Obviously, you, you had great time there. I know you, you and Owen are very close. Yeah. What, what, what is the story um, about, uh, it's a hilarious story, though. Know? Mm. Um, apparently, one of the players um, 
this thing of personalizing boots. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we were still young at the time. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> we were still young at the time, so we, we would take a, you know, a cocky pen, what do you yes, call it? Yeah, a cocky yeah, pen, yeah, like yeah, a black yeah, pen, sure. and we would write on our boots, you know, like, but now they're personalized, so we would write there whatever we wanted to write, like you know. K-E-M. Yeah, like K-E-M or like yeah. whatever. So I think uh, it was uh, cheaper, Tsepo Ramukala, I think he wrote Mama, on the one side, and then he wrote uh, Papa on the other <laughs> side. So, uh, usually after, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, after games, you know, the next day we would sit and talk about the game, you know, Owen would come and if we played well, he would encourage us and tell us, but if we lost, he would come hard on us, you know, he'd come hard and, you know, be like, a, like, a, we, we need to show more character, we need, you know, Owen is hard. So we would sit there, and then we were sitting there, and then I think while he was talking, he saw Chippa's boots, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what? How can you we win with someone who wrote their boots? Mama and Pap, you must write Pazuga and AK. <laughs> <laughs> that was the finest thing I've yeah. ever had. Yeah. yeah, but those were the times, man. We were young. We, yeah. I mean, we... We just wanted nice things. We wanted personalized boots and all that. But we had a great team, I mean, at Silver Stars. We always improved yeah, on our yeah, league position. Yeah, I think yeah. if it was eight, we would come sixth the next season, the other one fifth or fourth. We always improved and we, we, we beat the best teams as well. And then you get to, 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 to Super Sport, yeah. um, obviously, which is a bit, um, at that time, challenging for trophies. Yeah. Um, who do you get there as a coach? Uh, uh, Pizzo. Oh. And it's a, yeah, it, it, I was, uh, it was, well, in hindsight now, it was my last season at Silver Stars before I joined them yeah. as Supersport. So we were playing and then he called me to the national team. I think we were playing in uh, Lesotho or somewhere. Yeah, he called me. He, he was the uh, 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 national team coach at the time. So he was preparing to go to Kosafe. He called me to the national team and then... There he tells me, no, I called you here because I want to tell you that uh, next season I'm signing you. <laughs> I'm taking you to Supersport. And yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. no, it's okay, it's fine. And then next season I found him at Supersport. And uh, we, worked, we worked very well at, at Supersport. But we only, he only stayed for a year with me at Supersport, which was, uh, I wouldn't say it was one of my biggest regrets, but I wish he had coached me for a little bit longer. Okay. I think I would have probably achieved more or I would have probably went overseas if he had coached me a bit longer at that time. Oh, wow. Well. So, but then I, I got him again at Sundowns, but I was already... Yeah, but at least uh, I think yeah. a, co a consolation is that you win your first league title at Supersport. Yes. Um, out of... The, the five that you've won. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that the most special one for you? It 2007? Is. It is. That was uh, the, 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 I think that one was, it's more, it was more about the team than uh, it being special for me. Because at that time, uh, uh, we were players who were on the same age group, like we were the same age group, same level, same yeah. mentality. So you had me, you had Pelembe, same age, we had Dane, uh, we had uh, uh, Pa, we had uh, uh, Onyango as well. We had players who were, who were at the same age, more or less. So we wanted the same thing. So to take a group of players at that age and mold them to win the league, that's something special. Because teams that usually win the league are teams that are they have probably younger players blended with uh, uh, older guys and the experience wins you the league and the energy from the young players. But at that time we had players on the same age group. I mean, we could have done anything at that time because we were the same age. But to mold a team of players who are the same age into winning the league, that's something special. You're, 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 you're leaving Supersport. Um, you'll correct me. You trade with them in the morning, yeah, and then with parades in the afternoon. Yeah, that must have been a hell of a day. How, how is that your dream move? How did that move happen? 
Uh, but I knew that, uh, that, that because it was in January, I knew that January when I came back to the team, when I came back to Supersport after the Christmas holidays, I knew that I wanted to leave. Okay. I, I, I think I, have, I had spoken to team about it and our first game back uh, that January we played against Pirates and I was on the bench and I was a bit, I, I wasn't happy with that, yeah. you know? And then after the game, I told team that, no, I, um, I want to go now. I think um, 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 I, I won't enjoy myself anymore if I stayed here. And he was like, okay. So, Did that, you speak to Gavin? Yeah, well, Gavin was straightforward, man. Gavin is a straightforward a guy, he tells you what he wants to tell you. You can tell him whatever you want to tell him, and he doesn't hold a grudge or anything. Oh. He's a straightforward coach. He'll tell you he won't use you. He'll tell you when he's going to play you and whatnot. But at that time, I felt because I, I wanted a new contract at Supersport, and they were hesitant to offer me a contract and whatnot. So I was like, no, because this, apparently there was a rumor, you know, in the dressing room. And, it was flying around at the time that I wanted the uh, uh, telephone number as a salary, you know, that's yeah. probably how much I wanted. <laughs> I didn't know that, you know? <coughs> so I felt like I was, <clears throat> and the previous season we had won the league and I was... <laughs> there comes the banker now. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was killing myself to win the league for the team and now the next season they don't want to offer me a contract and they don't want to off you offer You wanted me. an improved contract? Yes. Okay. I did. And uh, after that, in the morning, we, I think we, I trained on a, on a Tuesday. We played Pirates on a Saturday. We were off the Sunday. We trained the Monday. The Tuesday morning, before I got to training, team called me. And he said, you, you leaving super sport. But I was on my way to training anyway. I got to training and I trained. And Gavin was just looking at me. So I, I didn't know if he knew or if he had something, but obviously he knew. He but still the, gave you all. Yes, at the, the whole training session, he was just looking at me. And then I, I remember I was stretching some, I think after the session I was stretching and he was like, you must stretch properly or you, you, you won't play football after three years because you'll be stiff. And I looked at him. And he was like, you, you, you know, he saw the Lord, it was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he left. But then I, well, I didn't know I was going to leave that day. And then after that, uh, we went, we ate after training, and then I went home. And then obviously I needed the rest, came home, sat on my couch. Half past one, team's phone, team phones me. And he says, uh, go to Johannesburg Stadium. <laughs> to do what? He says, no, go there and uh, and go train. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I will go. And then I went. And the other thing I forgot to tell you, oh gosh, football in South Africa is, yeah. is, is a bit of a, I don't know. I did a medical for pirates. When? On the 31st of December. Wait. <laughs> hey, uh, you, you, are, you are a super sport player. Yeah. And you're doing medical for Orlando Pirates. Yes. 31st of December. No, but. Okay. Yeah. How, how does that work? I don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I, but people, obviously, you have to do a medical. Well, yes, in, yes, in, yes, in yes, contract yes, yes, terms, yes. you do a medical before you sign the contract. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did that. Was, yeah. So probably they would have agreed and whatnot. But, but you wanted the move to Pirates. Did you want to go to Pirates or you just wanted out of Supersport? I think Pirates were the, was the team that wanted me the most. The other ones, I never had anything from them. Okay. No other team showed interest and whatnot. So Pirates were, was, was, was the one. And this is unbelievable. And then you get to training, obviously, so in the medical, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And Amajita, 
um, they welcome you there. Yeah. And now, do, do you have time to call your mates at Supersport to say, Dane, uh, no, no uh, I didn't. So and so, guys, I'm gone. Morgan, in Zanborn, next time. So you don't call them. But no. they're just surprised that. And, and remember, at, at, uh, well, it, it's, it happens. At that time, at that time when I, I, I went to Johannesburg Stadium, I remember I, I hadn't signed anything as yet. Yes. So I go there and then they give me training kit. I get into the change room, I change. And I went there with my car. And these guys have a game the next day. So it was a, a, a pre-match training per se. So there were players already going to camp. So they came in a bus and I, I came with my car. So there was about, well, they took 20 players to camp. You know how it works. So I was the 21st player in that, in that group. But I went there with my car. And then they came in the bus and then we went into the change room. We changed. And then when we changed, and then there was three or four camera guys at training. And then now I start, they start taking pictures of me in a pirate's training kit. And remember, I hadn't signed yet. And it's about, I think it was around half past five or six or so. Yes. In the afternoon. So I'm like, okay, then I take pictures, I take pictures, oh, it's fine. And then they say, no, I, I must go to camp. I don't have anything. Like, I don't have... Unbelievable. Nothing with me for camp or anything. But Pirates is a big team, so they give me stuff. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Track suits Obviously, the, the, the contract stuff is sorted out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, your move to Pirates looks like a perfect fit from yeah. where I... I am. Yeah, it, it, it did. And they were playing Maritz back the next day, the Wednesday. And then, uh, well, with all the happenings, and then team came to the hotel the next day, and then my page is already, my, my picture is already in yes, the... Yes, yes, yes. ...in the papers, and then so Pirates players, so wet and whatnot, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And uh, team comes to the hotel, and then we sign the contract, and everything is sorted, you know? And then now... I, I, well, being the person I am, I tell team that no, man, I can't just go to, go now and play in a Pirates jersey without calling the other guys, you know, the people I left behind. Mm. You know, Tommy, Gavin, Stan, Brajo, you know, those yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, Jackie the Meso, the, the yes, doctor, yes, you know. Yes, yes, I need yes, to yes. tell them that I've left. I, I was telling them that I would leave, but, you know, yeah. Now that I'm here, so I need. To, so I called Gavin. I said, "Coach, I, I wanted this move. I had to leave." Yeah. Know? And he yeah. was like, "Yeah, I know, but I wanted you to stay." But I was like, "Okay, I'm here now. So I wish the club the best uh, of luck going forward. Without me, I wish I didn't do that because they won the league at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and." And you had a great time at Paris. You 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 look yeah. happy. Is, yeah. it, is it is it the players that you you're playing with? Is it the environment? I think the, 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 there were good times and 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 miserable. But this, my first six months at Paris was the best. And in that six months, uh, uh, from January until the end of the season, Paris lost only one game. And it was a game that I didn't play in. That six months. Yeah. Um, so Pulinti Zion. Ellis Park. My first derby. Sure. I am watching it, you're warming up. Yeah. I'm like, we are going to have a problem because yeah. you were fired up before that game. Yeah, it was my first derby. My mom was in the stands. So I, I just said to. To, to taste that, man. I, I, I just had to give it my all. And I should have scored four goals in that game. Yeah. Probably. Easy, f easy four goals, but I scored two. But it, it was a great time. It was a nice time. Your combination with Tico, <laughs> bit of a problem. And the celebrations. Yeah, it was, but then it became a problem afterwards, you know. People started saying, nah, we only play for each other, we pass each other. So then it, 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 it I think it was broken at that time. Once the talk started, it became a problem because now 
even if he was free, I had to look the other way, you know? Because if I gave him and he scored, he would say, yeah, you see? They play for, or if I give him and it doesn't work out, then... But it became a problem, and after that, I, I think at Pirates, I just... I, I had a season where I, I was just everywhere. I was just... I didn't know whether I was coming or going. And then when we won the treble, I tried, but then again, I, after that, when they said no arrows, I was like, thank God. How difficult was it for you? Um, because that time, you are at the peak of your career, yeah. almost, you mm. know, and things are not working out, like, seemingly. Quick club, really cool, like Orlando Pirates. Yeah. Um, that must have been, I flew Pirates again. Yeah, it, it, it did. It did. And the move to Arrows also didn't help because I I didn't want that move. I I, I didn't want to go to Arrows. I, I didn't see myself going to Arrows at that time. But I would play for Arrows anytime. And scored goals. Yeah, I did, but it wasn't it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't the best uh, 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 time of my career at the time to go to Arrows. You know, I, I felt I I needed to be at a club that is probably challenging way up. I would I would have because loved you, to you you had won the treble yes. the season before. Yes. So someone w would think that this team from where I was. Yeah. Obviously, you know, um, I'm at Kaiser Chiefs Village at that time. Yeah. We, we like we don't even want to look. We're, we're very upset. I mm. mean, you you're thinking that you should be at parades. You you should be challenge part of the team that is challenging to defend these trophies and yes. repeat the same fit. Exactly. But what, what makes that team special? Mm. Taking into consideration that you guys had some of the challenges that you you just mentioned. What made it special? The the the, the first treble team. Yes. Yo, I think we, 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 the team had quality. We, we, we had quality. And we can't forget the, the coach the club had. I mean, Ruth Kroll is, a, is an astute coach. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's an international coach, you know. He's from Holland. He understands football. He was a good coach. And he had good players at the time. And he had instilled stuff in, in the team that uh, most coaches wouldn't. You, I mean, there was the fight, there was the never giving up, the play was good, and the team was scoring. It was just, and and the players were great as well. So at that time, I think you, that team had to win something, whether it was a treble or probably two trophies or one trophy, but that team had to win something. That Pirates team that won that first treble had to win something. Is, is that the highlight? Of your of your club career, the treble. Yes. No. No. I, I I saw you that season kissing the badge, man. Come on. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the highlight of my club career. No, it wasn't. Are you a Paris fan? Growing up. No. No, I was I was never a Paris fan growing up. Never. But when I played for Pirates, I loved Pirates. As soon as I put on the jersey, I wanted to play. And and I always played my, my heart out. But I, 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 pro I probably could have done more at Pirates. Are you disappointed with yourself? No, I'm not disappointed. If I'm disappointed with myself, I'll be ungrateful for what I've achieved. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm disappointed in my career. I mean, I had a long span. I had a proper career as a football player, 16 years. That's that's what you need. I mean, when you start a career as a football player, you need to play the whole way. You need to have that span. You need to play that that for that long for you to have a proper career. You know, you can't say you're a football player and your career only lasts two or three years. That's not... Wonderful stuff. That's not nice. I think that's why Personally, this interview was was very important because mm. I admire what you you've achieved in your career and yeah. and the joy that you've brought and the relationship that that you had, mm. you know, with fans, 
yeah. in the media. You, you, um, I, I had an opportunity to, 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 to watch you, you know, yeah. and, and I, I, I was very impressed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first part of the Lathlela with Uma Wood. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us. Please do subscribe and hit that notification button. Thank you. See you.